Can we measure velocity, acoustic velocity, u? It's not easy, but we can do it using Euler's equation, for example, over here. That means if I measure dpdx, in other words, I use two microphones, I know this distance, I measure here and measure here, and I know this, then I can measure this. How can you put the minus? It's a simple, in a circuit it's simple, just to reverse it. And then what I do, I divide rho zero, and then integrate with respect to time. And I can measure the velocity. But by doing that, the, these two microphones has to be identical. And it's not easy. How to get the identical microphone? Anybody has a good idea? Make it very carefully so that it has the same impedance, the same resistance, and the same thing. I don't think a KAIST students make such a such a time consuming effort. You just make many, many microphones and then test and select identical one among the many, many microphones. That's what they are doing. Right? Of course it's not possible to have exactly identical microphone, but somewhat identical microphone, then, then we can make intensity probe. So you can make your own intensity probe. How? Let's make many microphones together, like a 10, 10, 10, and how many we can make? About 200. Then we can select identical microphone, maybe two or three pairs out, out of 200. So intensity essentially measures the power flow, right? Right? So it's interesting. What if I measure the intensity from my mouth when I shout? You can hear, and you can hear. That means the power is flowing from this point to go all over the direction. So if you draw the intensity from my mouth, they look like I am holding many arrows. Right? That is the intensity probe, intensity plot. And using that plot, we can claim where the sound is generating. So using intensity map, we can certainly argue where the sound is generating. Okay, that is one good example, one good way to use intensity. So let me summarize what we studied today. Actually we learned a lot. I argued that one dimensional wave of a string really expresses what's going on in space, okay? And also one dimensional wave that describes the waves in a bar also expresses what's going on in one dimensional case. And those one dimensional waves are governed by general one dimensional waves. Okay. And then we move on to acoustic wave case by considering infinitesimal element of compressible fluid. First, we consider the force difference between two elements, uh, between the elements. And we came up with Euler equation. And also we considered conservation of mass. 
on this infinitesimal element. That simply says the change of density inside of infinitesimal element must be balanced by mass flux in and out. And that provides us mass conservation law minus d rho dt has to be equal to rho zero du dx. And the remaining equation that relates between the pressure and density, in fact, is constitutive relation. And that is, access pressure over access density is, is square of the speed of sound. Those three relations eventually make acoustic wave equation that is exactly same as the wave equation of a string. So the concept we learned driving point impedance, characteristic impedance is perfectly hold for one dimensional acoustic wave case too. Okay, in the beginning of this lecture, I also explained briefly about the concept of Green's function that I hope help you to do the uh, second homework. And your first keys will be covered up to some part of the chapter two. Okay, uh, that's it. That's the uh, summary of our today's lecture. The highlight is Euler's equation, conservation of mass, constitutive relation. Okay. And I hope you understand the physical meaning of those three equations. Okay? So see you on coming Thursday. <laughs>